Hello, how are you doing? Joe Barnes here and welcome to another edition of Social Networking Academy TV! Brought to you from the very glamorous surroundings of our front room in Barnsley. Who said internet marketing wasn't glamorous, eh? Eh? <laughs> anyway, far more importantly, what is in this week's issue? First of all, we're having a quick look at LinkedIn and the IPO, what's been going on there then? Um, and how that is going to have an effect on the future of social media. Uh, we are going to, there's a couple of Facebook updates I want to show you just to make your life a little bit easier while you're surfing around the site. This week's cool tool is something to help you with your videos. It's a very cool tool, in fact, something I use every day of the week. Um, and that's a bit of a video theme going on because also our tip of the week is all about optimising your videos as well. So we're going to be looking at some very uh, cool little features that you can do. Um, our marketing example this week is something that's a bit poignant and close to my heart, so I'll be sharing that with you in a sec. And also, our question of the week is absolutely brilliant. How do we get our fan pages off the ground? Once we've actually designed our page and it's out there, how do we now get more fans to it? How do we create more conversation and engagement on the page? So we're going to be having a look at a couple of ways that you can do that. So, jam-packed issue, loads to get in in the next 10 to 15 minutes, so without further ado, let's head straight over to the first feature, what's been happening in the world of social media this week. So, LinkedIn has been topping the charts for news articles this week with its IPO on Thursday, where LinkedIn became worth $8.9 billion by the end of the day. 8.9 billion dollars and through reading the news reports guys one of the one of the reasons that uh, the shares sold at such great prices is because there weren't that many available there's that law of scarcity again isn't there not that many shares available um, and the interest into social media was so huge that investors were just clamoring to purchase the shares now, um, reading through all of the different articles, people are concerned there's going to be another bubble, another dot-com bubble. Um, and of course, the last one ended quite spectacularly in 2000. Um, but I do believe that this time round, investors are going to be aware that the companies need to be far more substantial um, and have a lot more sort of going on in them rather than just relying on the advertising revenues of a lot of the old dot-com companies in the late 90s. Now, what does this mean for Facebook? Well, who knows? I mean, we need to wait and see whether Facebook are actually going to go public yet. Um, some experts are predicting that Facebook will literally wipe the floor with LinkedIn because of obviously all of the interest in Facebook and the fact that it, there's such high expectations for the company. Um, but I'm no economist, ladies and gentlemen, I'm no economist. All I know, uh, for, for me, I believe this means that if Facebook do go public, we're talking a lot more money, a lot more investment, more development, and I'm probably going to have to re-record all of my videos. But, <laughs> but you know what? Let's worry about that when it actually happens. For now, let's nip over and see what has actually been happening in Facebook this week. So here I am, guys, in my home page. Not my profile page, just my normal home page. And I'd like to lead you all over to the left-hand side of the screen, if I may, to this little pages icon down here this little flag and if we click on pages now boom there's all your pages in one place so you can manage all of your pages from one place and you can even create a new page directly from here as well okay so uh, that's new just wanted to show you that that was over there um, so you can now get to all of your pages directly from your home page which is pretty cool the other thing I just wanted to quickly point out to you as well is last week I was talking about tagging photographs. Yep, tagging photos. And if we go into one of my photos, so let me just click one in the top bar here. There's my photo. To be able to tag the photo, you have to come down here to this little button here that says tag this photo. If I click on that and then go back up to my photo and as I was telling you last week we could tag pages we can now tag pages so if I go over to free fan page templates which is one of my pages and click on that I've now tagged free fan page templates it's just disappeared let me just um okay so there's free fan page templates tagged in this photo now here's the thing guys this is not going to show on the wall okay if I go over to free fan page templates 
This is not going to show on my wall. Where it's going to show is within my photo album. So if I go over to photos and there it is, there's the photo that I've just tagged to go in here, but it won't show on the wall. Okay, so if you've tagged a page and you're hoping that it's going to turn up on their wall, that's not what's going to happen. Okay, so there's just a couple of um, social media updates for you this week. So this week's cool tool, other than my really funky headphones, is Handbrake. To get to Handbrake, you type in handbrake.fr, okay? What is Handbrake? Handbrake is a video compression tool. So it basically takes any video you've got and it makes it smaller, uh, which makes it play faster and... Uh, and also take less space up on your computer. So let's just go into my handbrake. Here's my handbrake. This is your little kind of control panel. And all you do is you click on source and you go in and you select whatever movie it is that you want to use. And then you select where you want that movie to be saved on your computer and you click start. Now there are a few other little things that you should um, play around with just to help you with your bit rates and your quality and all that kind of stuff. But um, I'm not going to go through those now. If you do want to know how to use Handbrake a little bit more uh, in detail, then I do go over that in the Social Network and Academy site. But also the really other cool thing that I just want to show you is over here with the toggle presets, you can actually do it so that it compresses it to make it playable on an iPhone or on an iPad or on an Apple TV or all of these um, tools. So handbrake.fr is what you want to be looking at guys to compress your videos and the really exciting news is it now has a GitHub mirror. Can you believe it? Handbrake has a GitHub mirror. <laughs> Do I know what a GitHub mirror is? Absolutely no clue and it also makes no difference to compressing your videos or it might do but um, not that I know about. So <laughs> All you need, guys, is to go in here, put your video in, click start, and it does it all for you behind the scenes. Okay, I think most of you know by now that I'm always on the lookout for things that are going to help me drop a few pounds. Well, this week's marketing example is a website that I found while I was surfing how to lose 50 pounds without doing any work whatsoever or going on a diet in 24 hours. <laughs> That's actually a joke. No, it wasn't. There, there isn't anything out there for that. Um, no, I was just having a look around and I found this site called ediets.com. Okay? Um, and it's basically all about diets. But what I really like about it generally is the layout of the page and some of the other cool features within the page. What I particularly like about it is the fact that right in the middle of the screen here, look, you get this question, how much weight do you want to lose? So you can put in here however much weight you want to lose. Okay, so let's say I wanted to lose 20 pounds. I'm not going to tell you honestly how much I want to lose. Um, and then you click on get your custom delivery plan and here are your email play get a free week of food lose 10 pounds in five weeks get a free week of food is what they're offering you so you can go in here and you can view the plan details um, and that's going to give you your diet for a week which I think is really quite cool now I can't order this unfortunately because I'm in the UK and it is only for the US but um, that's what I like about it is the fact that it has that interaction on the main page and over here as well What's your goal? My goal is to fit into my skinny jeans or keep up with my kids or whatever it is um, and then click on here. Start now, it's free. And that takes me over to a diet profile. So again, they're asking more questions about me. It's all about me. What's in it for me? Um, and that's a couple of things that I really do like about it. So what's the lesson to be learned here, guys? When you're starting to think about your squeeze page, your website, how you want to create engagement with people arriving at your page, a lot of it is about asking them what do they need, what do they want. And the more uh, you're, you're getting interaction with them directly on that page, then uh, the more they're going to be interested in what you have to say. Okay, so this week's tip of the week is actually seven tips. I suppose I could have just said the tip of the week is go and read this article, but I thought it'd be far more interesting to actually uh, show you the article and quickly run through the different steps with you. So I'll just run through these very quickly, but this is an article that I found on allfacebook.com this week by Grant Cowell, who's the videologist at realseo.com. 
didn't even know videologists existed. I didn't. I haven't even heard the term videologist. I apologise to all videologists out there. <laughs> but anyway, let's quickly run through these seven tips. So, tip number one is to limit your footage to, I'm just looking at my notes, is to limit your footage to five minutes or less. Okay, that's fairly standard, isn't it? We all know that people have short attention spans, so keep that footage to uh, between two to three minutes, I think, is probably the absolute ideal. Make a captivating thumbnail image for your video. Now, the great thing with Facebook is you can literally make this your first shot. You can do that in YouTube as well. Your very first shot can be your thumbnail. So you can think of something really quite cool. Um, maybe you do it as a presentation or maybe it's you in a funny pose or whatever you want to do, but a captivating thumbnail image for your video. Okay? Create a catchy or unique title. Again, not rocket science. I think we all know that to grab the headlines are going to grab people. So my best that when if I'm trying to think of really catchy headlines, um, I start looking through old issues of the Sun. Okay, the Sun newspaper. Uh, the U U.S. people are now thinking the Sun. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure you'll have equivalent. Um, okay, link to other videos that have relevant keywords. Okay, that's something you're going to be doing on on YouTube on a video sharing site where you can basically go out and link to other videos that have the relevant keywords that you do. You can actually go out and do video responses and things like that and link your video across across the site. Upload your current video to uh, video sharing sites. Now there are literally hundreds of video sharing sites out there on the net. Can I suggest that you start with setting up an account with TubeMogul.com TubeMogul.com okay? They will give you a list of video sharing sites that they will send your video out to. You will need to go and sign up and get an account on each one of those sites. But then when you upload a video, it's going to get sent directly out to all of those sites and boom, your video is going to be out there. So that's a great place to start. Okay. Uh, allow people to embed your code. You can do that with Facebook. On Facebook, when you upload a video, it automatically has an embed code underneath it. So you can encourage people. You can write there, hey, if you like this video, grab the embed code, go and put it on your website anytime, get out there, share. Okay? And last but not least, encourage people to rate and review your, your video. So that again, that's a YouTube thing, so you'd actually be saying on your video, hey, rate, review, click like, whatever it is you want to do, please do um, just leave your feedback and your comments and all that kind of stuff on my video. One of the things you do in Facebook is encourage people to share. If you like this video, please share it. Please get it out there, share it with your friends, share the love, tell everybody, uh, tell everybody about this video. Okay, so there's just a few ways. Thank you very much, Grant Cal. Uh, added a couple of my own in there. So um, there's just a few ways that you can optimize your videos on both Facebook and YouTube and the internet as a whole. week's question of the week didn't actually come from one person so if you're waiting for your prize I'm really sorry um, it actually came from so many people have been asking me this question that I really wanted to address it in today's show what do I do once I've designed my page Joe and I want to get it off the ground where do I start well I think there are three really key points that so many people miss they kind of get a page up there it's up there and then they think okay now what so before you even get to creating your page and getting it live on Facebook, there are three things I really want you to think about. Number one, really know your business, okay? What is your business? What is your niche? What message are you trying to get out to people? It's really important that your entire brand, your Facebook page name, everything that's within your info, on your wall, everything absolutely reflects what your business is. So don't even start to think about creating a page until you know categorically exactly what business you're in, what niche you're in, and what it is you want to achieve with that business, okay? Number two, know your customers. This is so incredibly important that you know who your target market is. This is something that so many people I've spoken to recently completely miss. No idea who your target market is. It's vitally important so that you can direct the right traffic to your page that you know the profile of your customer. You know their age, you know their sex, you know what they do, you know what they read, you know what they're interested in, all of that kind of stuff, okay? The more you know about your customer, the more you are going to be able to go out and get very, very targeted traffic directly to your Facebook page. 
And number three is know your vision. What's your overall vision with your company? What is it that you want to achieve? Okay, what is your Facebook page going to do for that company? Is your Facebook page just to get likes and create engagement interaction? Is your Facebook page somewhere that you want to collect names and email addresses? Is your Facebook page eventually going to become a portal for you to be able to sell products and goods from? What is your Facebook page for and how does it fit into the overall strategy of your entire business? Okay. So there are three key tips that I want you guys to really think about before you even create your page. Believe it or not, if you can get those down, when you get to the point that you actually create your page, you'll start filling your wall with content before you know it, fans will come in their droves, and you'll be having all sorts of interaction and engagement going on on your page, because that's the name of the game, guys, isn't it? It's all about engagement. It's all about engagement. So, I hope you've enjoyed this week's edition of the Social Networking Academy TV. It's been thoroughly enjoyable to sit here and chat with you and share with you all the different things that have been going on this week. Have a fantastic week, whatever it is you are doing, and I look forward to seeing you on next week's edition. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.